I think everybody is here except me, you one. So, no, we are. I, I must not cheat, huh? Yeah. I must wait two minutes. <laughs> Does everyone have the, uh, the link on the internet if you want to, to look? Yeah. It's a good way to sleep at night. No pills, only that. <laughs> So don't wait uh, in Dr. Verda to prepare your exam, little by little. And I will give you uh, soon a little uh, subject for the, uh, a little subject to, to work on. So maybe you can take imagination, you can take memory. I will give you some subject, but if you are interested with uh, uh, a point, you can work on that. And the paper will be a personal reflection, not a research. Personal reflection. You have all the material, you, you, you have that. Now you have to use that for, for your, apply to your life, apply to your, some even experience. Reflection, not, uh, not copy and paste. Okay, brother, we will begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue to pray for peace and justice, especially for Christians who are suffering so much in many, many countries, that the Holy Spirit gives them fortitude and also peace. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, seat of wisdom, pray for us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's warm now. <laughs> so we are this morning studying the second function of our intellect. Judgment. In fact, judgment is the central activity of every intelligent, 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 intelligent being. Every. Does God uh, know through his senses? No, he has no simple apprehension. Does God's reason? Does God's reason? Is it necessary for God to reason as we do a problem of mathematics? No, he knows. So the central act of every intelligent being is judgment. God judge. So that is what we are studying this morning. It is excessively important <laughs> chapter because it is the central activity of our mind is to judge. So uh, on page 21, it, uh, I start from that, uh, excuse me, page 19, first 19, Father Reichman gives you a paragraph enti entitled Understanding and Judging on page 19. And that paragraph is very important because he summarizes <coughs> all we study in the first part, how we know. Huh? Because when we attain an object, <coughs> through our senses, after that through our intellect, we are in direct contact, we are in contact with the reality. Huh? There is a conformity between what I know and what it is. For example, you know what is a cat. That means the concept of cat you have corresponds to the reality of any kind of cat, you know. 
So that is important. Why? Because even in the first operation of the mind, on grasping the reality of simple apprehension, there is already truth. Truth is there. But truth is materially there. Huh? What is truth is the conformity between my mind and the reality. So when you know what is, uh, good morning, good morning. Uh, I apologize, I begin maybe too early, but I think. <laughs> uh, you know, when I, I know what is a thing, you know, for example, what is a kangaroo. When you have the knowledge of kangaroo, there is a correspondence between the concept of kangaroo and the real kangaroo. Mm -hmm. huh? That means that it's very, very important because that it is the foundation of our epistemology. We know what is epistemology. It is the part of metaphysics proving that we can attain the truth. But in our simple apprehension, grasping the reality, there is already a conformity between uh, the object and between the subject. And the act of knowledge is an intentional union. Intent. We saw that, huh? And what is common between the subject and the object, we know it is the form. Huh? And that form, when we speak about that in our uh, technical language of philosophy, we say it is an intelligible express huh? species. Huh? Intelligible, intelligible species. It can be expressed and can be impressed. Okay. Intelligible species. Oh. Ah. The first time it is the insight, and after we repeat. But there is a common thing. That means the form of the desk is in my mind. My mind possesses the form of the desk. That means there is something common between the desk and my mind. So what is true? Truth is the conformity between the reality and my mind. So, it is what Father Bible wants to, you understand, huh? and I want you to understand, <laughs> that there is already material truth, a uh, material truth, a uh, material truth <coughs> in, in, uh, in the simple apprehension, because we are in contact with the reality. <coughs> And there is union. See, it is what he explained on page 19 and page uh, 20. Huh? Uh, so I will not repeat that because it is the excellent synthesis of the, the first part of the chapter. Excellent synthesis of what you have to answer me at the oral exam. <laughs> because my question, you know it. Explain me how we know. <laughs> So we have to master that. That is, is the most important thing in yeah, all philosophy. OK, page 21. So it is, you know, you say the, the I am uh, of the intellect. I am, I know, uh, I am knowing. And the it is of the object are formally one. So it is a union, a knowledge, sense. It is union between the object and the subject. Union, and that union is made through the form. Huh? So the form, the idea in the thing, huh? that we got after we got the concept, huh? is coming to the concept of desk is in my mind because it was in the desk. So there is common between me. I can know a desk because the form of the desk come to me. I have the knowledge of the desk. Your cat has the knowledge of the desk, but not as desk, as a thi like, like a thing. Huh? We know, we have the idea of this. We are able to abstract uh, the form of the desk. So the, the form is the bridge uh, between my mind and the reality. So I can say every time my senses function well uh, and I am awakened, my senses 
give me exactly what you receive, there is material truth. That means it is true. Uh, it is not a, uh, uh, illusion. It's not coming from my imagination. It's coming from the object. Okay. But now we can say. So I go to just uh, after that. Huh? Number seven. Yes, sister. Okay, the form, uh, the form of the thing, uh, mm -hmm. comes in my mind. Mm -hmm. So, what is common between the subject I and the object there? It, it is the form, uh, mm -hmm. and that form we call that the intelligible species. Uh, impressed the first time, expressed after the concept. You know? But the concept is attached to the form of the object. I cannot have the concept of a desk if I cannot abstract the, the, the idea of desk from the desk in, huh? or I mean any kind of desk. Okay? What is important is the word conformity. Huh? Conformity. There is a conformity between the reality outside of my mind and the idea in my mind. Okay? So I go now to number seven, page 21, seven, at the bottom of the page, uh, truth. Hmm? The term truth is the relation or ordering of the act of understanding to the object known. Huh? So we know, we know there is something common between, well, I know, what is to know is to have the form of the object in my mind. Okay, that is conformity, huh? union, common union, something common. Okay. Truth is a relation of identity between the human mind and the intellect, the subject, huh? and the external thing. Uh, in Latin, veritas est adequatum, veritus adren. Huh? The conformity of my mind, of the intellect, to the reality. Okay. I continue. Truth, that is the universal, that is the uh, the definition of truth, formal truth, mm -hmm. truth as truth. No? Here, it is truth, not as truth. It is true here, in fact, I will say, more in the ontological meaning, the mean, the, the, the reality of the thing. Everything which exists is true. By the fact a thing exists, it is true existence, no? If it is not true existence, it will not exist. <laughs> So existence of everything implies the, the truth of the thing. So when you study metaphysics, you are not in metaphysics, but when you study metaphysics, you will see that and compare being to a triangle. Being or existence must be one. Because if I have two beings, if you see two beings, huh? being is one, as this is saying one. But being, because it can be known by an intellect, is true. Anyway, it can, be, it can be known at least by the one who did that. Huh? And the one who can know that. So every being, by the fact he, it exists, is true. That truth here, we call that ontological <coughs> truth. It is the truth of the thing, the truth in the thing, not the truth in your mind. The truth in my mind, we call that logical truth. I mean, when you have the idea huh, of a thing, and that idea corresponds to the reality. For example, you say, you know, Paul is a good golfer. Okay, you say that. But this, where is the truth? The truth is the conformity between God is a good golfer in your mind and God is a good golfer on the <coughs> golf court. <laughs> you know, huh? That is true. That truth we call that on logical. That means the truth is in my mind. In my mind. Here, the truth is in the being, in the thing, in the object. I give you an example, maybe I repeat. Imagine 
uh, a boy, a boy, a man, uh, a young man, he wants to give a beautiful ring to his future wife, uh, fiancé. So he gave all oh, beautiful, he put that here. It's supposed to be diamond, it's supposed to be gold uh, or silver. But in fact, if, see, after a few days, the gold disappears. You know? Hey, is that the true? Not true. Gold. It's not ontologically true. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. huh? the, the thing, when you, yeah, you, you buy, uh, uh, you buy, for example, uh, it was the case of the king of uh, Syracuse, huh? with, his, with his crown. He wanted to be sure it was real gold, real gold, not appearance of gold. Huh? In Cameroon, they have uh, students on Sunday. My seminary in Cairo. Hey, father, we bought beautiful watches, not expensive, huh? on the market from Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> and they wore a calendar. Beautiful calendar. Hey, father, look, beautiful calendar. Two, three days after, they realized the calendar did not move. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fake calendar. It was not a real calendar. It was, on, it was not ontologically. Huh? You buy butter, but it's, they give you margarine. Tented, huh? tented margarine, colored margarine. Huh? Is it true margarine? No. So that is not ontologically true. Okay? You see the difference between the, the, the truth in the thing, we call it that truth, transcendental truth, we see that in metaphysics with Dr. Duncan, and logical truth, that my, in my mind. But when here we speak about truth, it's truth in my mind. Okay? So in the first operation of the mind to grasp what is a thing, there is truth. Because there is correspondence between the reality and and uh, and and, and, uh, and your mind. But what is the difference between judging and apprehending what is a thing? I give you an example; you will understand. Can you can give can you give me the definition of a cyclops? Huh? A cyclops. When I hunt cyclops, a man with only one eye here. Huh? We see that in the cartoon. Huh? Only one eye. Huh? You know that. You know that. Is it? Is it? Exist, is that exist? No. So when you define, when you have the concept of cyclops, at the same time. What do you see in your mind? It does not exist. So you are able to verify the correspondence between what you think and what it is in the reality. That power of seeing the correspondence, the conformity between the thing you see and your, the, the idea you have here, that is truth. Truth is there. So there is no truth in the first concept. But every time you have a concept, your judgment is working. Because we cannot have a concept without judging at least one thing. Existence. A judgment of existence. Huh? Well, okay. I ask you, what is a leprechaun? And you are a good Irish, and you give me the definition of leprechaun because you met him on St. Patrick's Day after a 10 bottle of beer. Hmm? <laughs> a leprechaun, okay? But when you say you give me the definition of the leprechaun, what your mind is saying at the same time? It's fiction, no? It's fiction. You know, all those guys who produce movies uh, huh, with uh, monsters and the when they do that, they think it is not real. We cannot stop our judgment to say that is true, that is not true. We judge as we breathe. 
Your father or your grandfather told you of what one we have a kid. We cannot make the difference because sometimes we took, we, yeah, we, when we were young, we took the fiction as the reality. But now, when we are reasonable, we can. When are you able to say a child is reasonable? When he is able to make the distinction between fiction and reality. When the day a child is doubting about the existence of Santa Claus, he is reasonable. <laughs> yes, you know, because, you know, I gave you an example of that in Africa, in Cameroon. We have a Swiss family in our mission. They were organizing all the, uh, for the, we, the well, they, they dug 5,000 wells. And they have two children, and one was uh, young, and every St. Nicholas, on the 5th of December, they, they, they gather all the Swiss people in Cameroon, and they go to the embassy. And Santa Claus, not Santa Claus, Saint Nicholas, you know, the bishop with the mitre, and appear, huh? appears, and he give gift to the children, you know, Saint Nicholas. So a day, the, the child came back home, and he said to his mother, you know, it's funny, Saint Nicholas has the same shoes as Father Gerald. <laughs> 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 you know? that now is able to make the difference between <laughs> fiction and reality. In fact, every time we know something, we, we, we make a judgment about the existence of the thing. That means we judge considerably. And we can say that is true. That means that that exists or that does not exist. Okay? Well, now we have to study that in more. A relation of identity, or if you want, a relation of conformity. Huh? Conformity. In Latin, adequatio. Huh? Equation. Huh? Equation. Adequatio. Equation. Huh? Uh, with one thing as to another, arising out the fact that the intellect, that is very important, is aware of his own formal identity with the other. That is judgment. Now, when you know what is, uh, what is a kangaroo, the form of the kangaroo is united to your form. Okay, that is the fact to know what is a kangaroo. But not only you know that you know, you know a kangaroo, but you know that you know. Huh? You are aware of your awareness. So you can see the conformity between the kangaroo and the idea of kangaroo. Because of that, you can say the kangaroo, the kangaroo exists, and that is a judgment. So the, 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 in the first operation, we have the subject and the object, and we see the conformity. We don't see. We affirm the conformity, the definition, the form of the object and the mind. In judgment, the same thing, but here I am aware, I know that conformity. Here there is conformity, here I know the conformity. That is judgment. It is a second level. I know, I understand my understanding. What is that? Reflection. And when we speak about a child, and he become reasonable, we say he is the age of reflection. He can reflect. What do you mean of reflect? He can make a judgment. He can judge. Okay? So, in short, uh, truth is in the intellect in the fullest sense in as much as the intellect knows its own conformity with other. Not only there is conformity of the thing, to the thing in my mind to the other, but I know that conformity. I can reflect on that conformity. A dog can know, a cat can know the conformity between the thing and the images it has. He can know, but he cannot know that he knows. 
I give you an example of that. Maybe I, I, if I repeat, excuse me. Huh? Uh, one of my companions in mission, Father Bouchard, uh, he was a parish priest in the youth parish. In fact, Cardinal Legis stayed with him 10, ten years, 11 years. And he bought statues, little statues huh, in ivory. You know, ivory is not, oh, it's not legal today, but in that time, huh, okay, ivory statue. He put that in the, uh, uh, on his, uh, at the top of his desk, statue. It's just very beautiful, Virgin Mary, Sacred Heart, all those statues. But there are also some statues made in plastic. Almost perfect imitation of the, the reality, the ivory. It's difficult to see the difference, but there is a trick. You take a match and you put the match on the plastic. What will happen? Plastic will melt. If you put a match on the ivory, it will not melt. That is a trick. Huh? So, a day, Father Elliot, he, 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 his door, uh, the door of his office stayed open. And what happened during the day? The dog entered. <laughs> <laughs> you smell bones? <laughs> because ivory is bones. And what he did? But he was not able to control himself. He jumped on the desk and he he, he, he chewed all the statues made in ivory. But he did not touch the statue in plastic. Interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. That means he was able to see the correspondence between what he, he smelled and the reality. Huh? He did not touch the statue in plastic. And when Father Bouchard came back, oh, there was only a rest of bones. Huh? The statue was in the belly of his dog. So, that's interesting. But the dog cannot know that he, he knows. <laughs> he cannot reflect on his act. We can reflect. A child can know. He can know, for example, what is a cat. He does not know. He knows there is, it is a cat. And a child three years old, four, two years old, he knows the difference between the cat and the dog. He knows that. But he does not know that he knows. That means he cannot make a judgment of existence. And when we are able to make a judgment of existence, or a judgment of co co the conformity between the reality, we say, oh yes, indeed. Uh, indeed, the kangaroo is a, is a strange animal. Okay, when I say that, I am on the second level of knowledge. Not only I know, I know that I know. I reflect. I have the control of my knowledge. I can say that my knowledge, uh, what I say, is conform to the reality or not conform to the reality. It is the reason why it is after that time that a child can commit a lie. <laughs> we cannot commit a lie outside of that. We commit a lie when we know that when we say that that does not correspond to what we know. Uh, what is because we can judge our uh, uh, first level of knowledge. Okay, so you catch uh, the simple apprehension, it is the grasping of the reality. That is materially, material truth, material truth. But in judgment is formal truth, formal truth. And here we come back to Aristotle, uh, matter and form. Uh. The matter of truth is the simple apprehension. The formal, it is when my mind is able to put a correspondence between what I know about the thing and the existence of the thing in reality. <laughs> Page 22. So truth is the act of understanding first in the, judge, in the simple apprehension, I told that. Huh? Every act of understanding is essentially a necessary truth. Why? Because it is the direct correspondence to the reality. Is the reason why my sense don't induce me into error. And that is opposed to Mr. Descartes. Huh? Completely opposed to Descartes. And that is uh, what we are studying now. In fact, it is epistemology. Huh? We try to prove the validity of our knowledge. Huh? Okay? Yet, 
<laughs> the fullness of truth is lacking. Not yet fully aware of his own truth. I know, the child know. For example, you ask a, a little child, the, 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 uh, take on the desk, you put yellow, orange, blue, or uh, red uh, things. You see, oh, put the red things together. He will be able to do that. But he cannot make a judgment on that. But he can materially know the truth. He know the truth. Uh, when well, the, the uh, child is able to make the difference between a real cat and a, and a, 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 cat, a, a cotton cat, <laughs> he can make the difference. Huh? Okay, he can make the difference between a true cake and a, a cake in plastic. Huh? <laughs> a child, yes, it, because we have a dear, he has material knowledge, a material truth, but he has not formal truth. Okay, so I go to the rectangle. Huh? Truth implies a reflection on the act of knowing. In the act of understanding, that means simple apprehension, huh? the intellect expresses to itself what it receives. In this act of understanding, the intellect has not yet reflected on its own object. This reflection happens only when the intellect judges of the value of the conformity existing or not existing between the subject and the object. So simple apprehension give me conformity between the subject and the object, but the judgment is to evaluate that conformity. It is true or it is not true. Mm -hmm. huh? The act of uh, understanding is simple, but the act of judging is complex. In simple apprehension, the act, in the intellect, is objectively conformed to the reality. It simply receives the form. So the intellect is materially true or objectively true. That is very important because our sensation give us a, a, the possibility to attain the truth. They don't give the truth, but they make us in contact with the object, with the object, with the reality. Um, so, the intellect is, uh, the, uh, no, the next, next sentence is very important. The impress and express intelligible species are true intelligible representation of the, of the object. They are true representation. That means they represent really the object. <coughs> huh? So, it is the first level of attention. Huh? First level of attention. And now after that, if I reflect on that, and intellect reflects on this own act of knowing, I know that there is correspondence between conformity between what I think and what it is there, that is a judgment. And how we can attain that? The true verification, true reasoning. In fact, every judgment implies either a direct verification, direct experience, or a reasoning. And that is the third operation we study after next, next class. Huh? Okay. So essentially, uh, uh, truth is to verify the, if the relation, if the conformity, if the adequation, uh, is the identity between the subject and the object uh, is valuable or not valuable. That is reason, that is judgment. And to do that, I have to reason or I have to have direct intuition. Huh? Reasoning or direct intuition. And now we go page 23, the judgment. In fact, the, chap the last paragraph of the, chap part, the first part is already the second part. <laughs> uh, it's the bridge between the, the two first operations. Okay. So, um, <coughs> well, judgment in a non philosophical way, uh, it is a legal meaning. The judge uh, gave a judgment. That is is not the meaning we have. Uh, second, what is that? Uh, um, judgment is the phase in the process of understanding when the intellect judges uh, or acknowledges, acknowledges uh, knows the source of that which is known. Now, that which is known, it is by form, in my mind. Uh, and the source is the object. So when I know that there is correspondence between what I know and what is the object that is judgment. 
So conformity between what is my mind and what it is in the reality. What kind of truth? Logical truth. Huh? If you think about the real value of your ring, that is ontological truth. Okay? Um, next paragraph. So the intellective fact of judgment is the coming of the intellect to a full appropriation of his own act of understanding. Huh? Not only I understand, but I understand that I understand. I reflect on my act, first act of understanding. I reflect on my simple apprehension. I can val evaluate my simple apprehension. I have the control of my sense and intellectual, intellectual knowledge. I can verify. I can judge. Okay? Um, <laughs> Okay, so you can read that by yourself. Uh, I go to page 24. So there is full knowledge when we attain the truth. Judgment is complete understanding. We know not only what the thing is, that is certain apprehension, what it is, but we know the conformity between my knowledge of the thing and the reality, the existence, and the real being outside of my mind. And that is very important. Why? Because my knowledge, my judgment is measured by the object. If I am not conformed to the object, I am not true. If I am conformed to the object, I am true. It's excessively important. I give you a proof of that. In ethics, in ethics, if you are, if the, the truth in ethics, that means the value of moral law in ethics, is measured by nature, by was is outside of you, you are not the master of ethics. You are measured by something outside of you. That is the position of uh, a realist, a reali a realistic moderate. Huh? Real moderate realis realism. Huh? That means we have a measure. If we have outside of measure, that measure can be known by everyone. No, we have opportunity to have a magisterium, to have a universal law. If the measure is not from outside, the measure is from my, myself. Consequent, you know very well. Huh? It is rationalism, it is subjectivism, it is relativism, there is no possibility of common ethic. It is ethic of situation, huh? uh, sequential ethics. Okay? So the uh, I continue. To formulate a valid and true conclusion, we need to reason. And to read to reason, the form of that is syllogism. In fact, if I say, Paul is uh, something new. Is a good Christian, okay? A good Christian, okay? Paul is a good Christian. That is a judgment, okay? How I can see, I can verify that Paul is good Christian. I must add a reason for that. I must add a why. That means I must reason. And the expression of reason in, in it is syllogism, demonstration. Huh? That means a, con a judgment is always the fruit of a reasoning, or, I told you, the fruit of a direct contact with a thing. You are in front, you are walking, huh, in, in the, uh, walking in, I, hiking in the in National Park, huh, in Wyoming, for example. And suddenly, you meet a friend, and that friend is a grizzly. Huh? Your judgment will be true because you don't have to reason, huh? You don't have to say, oh, that animal, yes, I think is a bear. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have a direct intuition of the grizzly in front of you. That is a true grizzly. And my mind is true when it is a true grizzly, you know? That is intuition, direct huh? intuition. 
right? We don't reason to say that I am here. But if you told me, you know, my father in uh, Oklahoma or my father in San Francisco uh, as a car accident, no, I, I, it's not a direct admission. Huh? Or if you want to prove, the judge, that the man is guilty, you have to prove that by a trial, a why. Huh? So we, a judgment, in fact, is to verify if my thought is confronted to the reality. And to verify that, I must use a tool. And that tool is reasoning. And that tool is the third operation of the mind. We see that next class. Okay? So, in fact, the central act of thinking is judging. When you say, this apple is sweet. Okay? You see that. You must know what is an apple. You have a concept of apple. You have the concept of sweet. How you can put that together? How you can say an uh, apple is sweet? How you, you can say that a corazon is the better fruit you can eat? <laughs> Only through experience or through reasoning, huh? or through the witness of someone, you know? You are not obliged to believe me when I say that. <laughs> it's a lack of faith. But if you accept, it is a judgment. Huh? So here I say this apple is sweet because I eat it. I have a direct intuition. Huh? So when something they are very easy to verify because they, it is a direct contact with the object. Something is not easy. When did you say uh, John uh, Paul is guilty of uh, he, he, he killed someone? Yeah, but nobody saw him, and we say he is guilty. You have to prove that. That the demonstration is reasoning. But the conclusion is the judgment. In fact, every judgment is a conclusion after a reasoning or after a direct experience of existence. I don't reason to see you are here. But I can say I have 22 students in my class. Yes? So it's the syllogism. Syllogism. Syllogism is um, something that is easily to know is true because you have yeah. a direct encounter. Yeah, yes, it is an operation of the mind which leads me to a conclusion. And that conclusion is a judgment. Because I cannot judge without proof, no? A judgment is an affirmation of the existence of the the conformity between my mind and the reality. Is that enough to say that? To, to say that is true? I have to prove it. Huh? To prove it to myself. Oh, I give you. Remember when you were 10 years old and sometimes you wanted to stay at home because you were not interested to go to school? What you said to your mother? Oh, mother, this morning, oh, you know, I have fever, I don't feel well. Huh? <laughs> I am sick. What did your mother? She checked. Thermometer. <laughs> Proof. Proof. We cannot say you are sick without the symptom, without some proof. And she looked at the thermometer. Mm. Go to school. <laughs> it's very, in fact, the three operations are linked. We cannot separate that. I cannot separate the judgment from the simple apprehension. I cannot put the judgment without knowing what I think. I cannot affirm a thing without a proof. That being, I must use reasoning, syllogism. Huh? Okay? Father, yes. direct intuition, what did you say it was again? Direct the, the intuition is direct contact with the thing. For example, you have a direct knowledge of me here. Huh? So that is intuition. No reasoning, it is direct, you know, okay? Um, okay, page 24. All simple act of understanding are followed by the second act of judging. That means every time I have, a, 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 I know something, at the same time I, I have a judgment about that. Of course, we, we study separately. Uh, we study first sensation, imagination. But in fact, 
everything happened, takes place at the same time as the speed of light. Okay? That means when I have a sensation, immediately I have a concept attached to that sensation if I am awakened. Huh? It is cold. Immediately I have not only a sensation, I have the idea of cold. Not only I have the idea of cold, I have the idea that what I am feeling is true because I have to take a, a jacket, you know? So that means every sense knowledge leads us to not every sense knowledge. When we are awakened, of course. Huh? If I say knowledge, then I imply you are awake, huh? you know. Okay, so is accompanied with a concept. The concept is accompanied with a judgment. And the judgment is accompanied with a reason. Why I am cold, you know? Why it is cold today, etc. So our, our mind function in synthesis, you know? I don't have here a concept. Oh, very well. Now here I have a judgment. Oh, good. I say reasoning. Oh, no. They are working. Like all the pieces of a plane are working together. Mm -hmm. I cannot say the, 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 the compass and the motor and the wings and the tail. They must work together. Otherwise, you crash. Huh? Okay? So it's the same. Huh? When we analyze, in fact, when we study intellection, we analyze the different function of the mind. But be aware, they are working together. Huh? Okay? So you see, huh? Our sensation are leading us to concept, and our concept are provoking judgment. We judge because we are provoked by something, no? Why we judge? Because we have sensation. How we can say, that smell good if you don't smell? <laughs> okay. So they are complementary, huh? Complementary. Uh, in fact, Every, every, no, we, we saw that just before, huh? every time I have the form of the thing, I have implicitly a judgment about the existence of the thing. Huh? If I speak about a kangaroo, you say that exists. I speak about a, leak, a unicorn, or I speak about a cyclop, huh? or a leprechaun, you have the good definition, but that does not exist. <laughs> Um, well, I'm a yes. faulty judgment, so, I mean, I judge all the time, I make errors all the time, so is that because I'm not understanding what I'm reflecting? No, no, you, you understand. You know, understanding is first to know what is a thing, yep. and understanding on the understanding is to know that thing exists or not, yep. is true or not, you know? And to affirm that that thing is true or not, I must have another one, <laughs> huh? another reason. So, in fact, Simple apprehension, judgment, and reasoning, they work continually together. Okay. But we analyze that separately, but be careful. Now don't say they are, they are a, 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 of course we can separate them in my mind, but in the reality they work together. Many functions, like in your body, your heart is working, your stomach is working, huh? your lungs are working at the same time for one life. No? You have one living, but we have many functions. It's the same if it's a mind. We have one mind, but we have many functions. You remember when we studied the temple apprehension? No? We have hygiene intellect, passive intellect. We have the capacity of knowing what is a thing. We have the capacity to put many things together. It is judgment. But to put many things together, we must have a reason for that. That is reasoning. So the three operations are very intimately united. Huh? Okay? But we study that in separate, like in logic. Huh? In logic, we study first simple apprehension. After that, reasoning, uh, judgment. After that, reasoning. But in fact, they are together. Huh? They work together. Okay? Um, so in number four, uh, judgment is inevitable consequence of a first simple uh, understanding. Huh? We cannot refrain from judging. That is important for the future priest, huh? when we speak about a rash judgment. 
A rash judgment is not the first judgment we have about somebody. It is when we accept that without proof. When we affirm without proof, that is a rash judgment. But you know, a judgment, I see something, I see something. Okay? So at the bottom here, huh? act of intellect itself is present to the interactive power. Huh? The act of the intellect is a reflective intellect. Essentially, judging is reflecting of my concept, of my the value of what I know. I verify, I affirm the, f I affirm or I deny uh, the value of my understanding, and I have to have a proof for that. And the proof I have to reason about that or to measure experience when it is direct, uh, direct knowledge. For example, Descartes said. You know, we cannot attend the truth because if you put a stick here, the stick is broken. Okay? That, that is what my senses say. See, but if I say the stick is broken, I'm not true. How I can know the stick is not broken? I take the stick outside of the water, it's not broken. So I have to explain why the stick is broken, apparently broken. So the density of the milieu, huh? air and water. Okay? Change the, the speed of light. Huh? You know that. Huh? Okay. Page 25. So judgment is a reflective act. I, I work already. What is the condition to have a reflective act? It is immateriality. Huh? It is because we have the capacity, we have spirit, we have immaterial, and not only immaterial, we have spiritual. Because re the power of reflection is totally independent of any kind of matter. It is totally spiritual. Uh, reflection is a pure spiritual action. And this is, that is very important because how we can do our soul is spiritual? <coughs> Through its activities. And the central activity of the soul, of the intellect, is to judge. And that act of judgment is a reflection on another it is totally independent. That act of reflection needs absolutely not a single material object. It is coming from your own initiative. Otherwise, your cat will be able to reason, to, to judge. So that is spiritual. That is very, very important. The capacity of reflection, the capacity of judging, proves that man is a spiritual being. His soul is spiritual because his activity are totally independent from matter. It is stronger than the uh, abstraction. Because abstraction, we need an object huh, as an instrument. In, a, in the reasoning, the, we don't need any instrument. The unique instrument is my own mind. I am not provoked by nothing material to judge. The initiative comes from me. That is excessively important because the spirituality, the proof of the spirituality of the human soul is based on that. The power of reflection. You know, we are establishing the future now. Huh? Okay. Um, I go now to the... The, uh, the, 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 square, the rectangle here. The intellect huh, sees its relation to the other. We see. But that knowledge is, it does not depend absolutely not on any matter. That is excessively important. I told you, I repeat. Huh? In, we, for uh, abstraction, we need the phantasm. But in our judgment, we have no phantasm at all. Nothing. We judge only the conformity, something already spiritual, <laughs> already in my mind. Huh? Okay. I continue just after that. Uh, we can say that the exact of understanding is independent from the matter. Okay, in the case of, of uh, uh, abstraction, because the phantasm is instrumental cause and the former is in my mind. But in the, ki in the case of judgment, the act of judging is, I repeat, totally independent of any matter, therefore spiritual. What is the difference between immaterial and spiritual? It is there. Immaterial does not imply 
totally dependent. For example, your cat has an immaterial soul. Yes? And to know, we have immaterial image. For example, the phantasm is a formal sign, no? It is immaterial. It's there, it's immaterial, okay? But spiritual, it is something immaterial without any dependency on matter. That is the difference. We can say every spiritual reality is immaterial, but not every immaterial reality is spiritual. You see the difference, that's very important. No? The soul of your cat is, is immaterial. Your soul is spiritual. Can you because say that one more time, Father? I'm sorry. Not every immaterial thing is spiritual, but every spiritual reality is necessary immaterial. Immaterial can exist in and independently of the matter, but is not matter. For example, matter and form. The form and everything is immaterial. The form of your desk is immaterial. The idea in the desk is immaterial. Otherwise, there will be no difference between the idea and the matter, no? So we saw that, highly morphism. But the soul of human mind is no more, is more than the material. It is spiritual because its functions are totally independent from any kind of matter. Especially the power of judging, the power of reflection. Because judging is to reflect, no? okay? Uh, well, senses cannot judge because they cannot reflect. No? Page 30, 26, um, number 7, the human intellect can reflect because of its immateriality, but I added because of its spirit spirituality. Otherwise, your cat be able to reason. No? We, we, we are totally independent. And that is important because when I will die, because my soul is totally independent in thinking, we continue to be independent. It is the function, the basis of the immortality of the soul, you see. Yes? Well, I guess that, that middle sentence is what turns me up there. Nothing material can produce an immaterial reality. Well, I don't... Nothing material? Don't we cannot material. produce what we are not. <coughs> I cannot ask a, uh, I cannot ask a, uh, a plant to speak. No? We cannot give what we don't possess. So if I possess only materiality, I cannot give immateriality. Is there a reason why we cannot accept the theory, materialistic theory, I say, materialistic theory of evolution? But like Father Teilhard de Chardin, de Chardin, we can accept evolution if there is another factor uh, injecting, putting life and putting mind in the matter. That then we accept the Creator. No? No? Evolution is perfectly compatible with the idea of a God Creator. The God can, we saw that God uses uh, the nature to continue. Use with your parent to make you, no? <laughs> he would be able to say, okay, now it's time to produce a uh, brother job. It's time to produce Mr. Uh, Lincoln, uh, Washington. No. He, he proceeds using the law of nature, you know? Okay. And I will split that in philosophy of God. Huh? Um, so the, I go to number eight. Judgment is a reflective act allowing the intellect to know the truth. In fact, when I reflect on my first knowledge, huh, on my simple apprehension, I am, this, I, I am, uh, I am not creating, I, I, I am making the truth. In fact, the truth is not in the object first, it's in my mind. But it is in the object in as ontological truth. Because when I speak about uh, a rabbit, the rabbit, exists until it is true as a rabbit, you know? Is the reason why I, can, I cannot say psych, uh, uh, cyclop exists? If I say cyclop exists, it's not true. Why? Because cyclop does not exist. 
they have no ontological truth. If they have no ontological truth, they cannot be true for me. You know? But the problem of truth for us is not in ontological, uh, ontological domain. It's not the being itself. It's the correspondence of the external being to my ear concept I have here. On that. Huh? Okay. So I go to page 27 uh, at the top. Very important here. Uh, this is the reason why only an intellective being knows the truth. Only the one who is able to go above the, f uh, above, to abstract, uh, to be able to reflect on the man. And what is the definition given by Mr. Aristotle? Man is a rational animal. Yeah. Rational is reason. Reason is uh, reasoning, but reasoning to arrive to a conclusion, a judgment. Huh? Okay. That the difference, God is not reasoning because he knows everything at the same time. Huh? And we reason because we are not perfect. We are in time and space. Okay. Uh, nine, judge, judging is the true act. I hear St. Thomas says, the perfection of the intellect is truth as known Therefore, properly speaking, truth resides in the intellect composing and dividing. What is that? Composing. That means united a subject with a predicate. What is that? It is judging, huh? judgment. Proposition, judgment. Huh? John is a good Catholic. John is an American. John is a human being, etc. That is... Huh? That is composing. If I say <laughs> cyclop does not exist, is not existing, huh? uh, letter corn does not exist, John is not a Muslim, etc., that is dividing. So, what is judging? Is to combine or to divide? To combine what? A predicate to with a subject using a copula, huh? a link, huh? in Latin, copula means link, huh? a link, and the link is the verb to be. That is very simple, that is the proposition, we study that in logic, huh? the proposition. We express our, uh, we express our judgment through a proposition, and the proposition essentially is made with a predicate attributed to a subject. And subject, you know what is it? Huh? It is what it is under the predicate. Huh? So, subject, under, carrying the predicate. Huh? <coughs> okay. <laughs> so, it is the, say it is in and through the intellective act that the relation of the knowing act to the other, to the object is fully known. So, it is only in my intellect. So, essentially, Reason, uh, judging is proper to, no, not proper to man. Is yes, in the uh, among animal is is essential to man. Huh? Is essential to every intelligent being. God judges. Angel, I don't know in philosophy, but through faith I know they exist. Judge, and that is coming. But we know through reasoning. Angel don't know through reason. They know through intuition. And God knows by himself. Huh? Knowing himself, he knows everything. <laughs> but this, uh, okay. um, so, now I already explained to you on the difference between logical truth and, uh, and uh, ontological truth. I go to pa paragraph 10. Judging is understanding on the understanding. Okay, I already explained that. Huh? Okay. So, um, if I go to 10.2, it is futi futile to attempt to prove that we understand the intellect knows the truth. The concept of truth are not alien to each other. It means truth and existence, they go together. You remember my triangle, huh? Truth and existence, truth and being, they go together. Where is being? Where is truth? What is uh, being is true and being is good and being is one. Mm -hmm. So 
there is a link between truth and existence. In fact, what is truth is a link between my mind and existence. So that means every time I have a judgment, the ju act of judgment is always linked with a kind of mode of existence, a mode of a substance or accidents or existing. <coughs> because by definition, <coughs> truth is the link between what I think and what it is in the reality. Huh? B. Next page. <coughs> Excuse me. So in the act of judging, the intellect knows the nature of his own act. We know who we are when we judge. We, can know, we cannot know who we are if we, are, we don't know our activities. We know ourselves through our activity. How do you know you can speak? When you speak, no? <laughs> How you can know you play the piano? When you play the piano. So you know yourself through your activity. And you know you are intelligent to your intellective activity, abstraction, and uh, judging and reasoning. Huh? And the intellect knows its conformity to the object. Okay? So, number four, in the acts, uh, the intellect judges or discerns his own present state of understanding. Uh, to judge is to discern my act of understanding. Uh, I, discern, I, I can say, not only I know what is a kangaroo, but I know that a kangaroo exists or not exists. I can make a relation between my concept, my knowledge, uh, concept, and the reality, a link between that. That is judging. Okay. And now 11, very important, paragraph 11 is central. Huh? Um, <coughs> Judging is the affirmation of the existence of both the subject and the object. And that is extremely important because our ethics is based on objectivity. Huh? The foundation of moral ethics is nature. Nature is the object, huh? is what is outside of me. According to Aquinas, because intellect does not know itself, it can know, uh, it does know itself, excuse me, it knows others. The existence of judging is directly to the existence of other. How a child knows himself? Because he knows his mother first. And knowing his mother, and knowing his father, and knowing his dog, and knowing his cat, and knowing his little sister, finally he discovered that he exists, independently of them. And finally, after many years, two, three years, sometimes, he can say, I. A boy does, a girl does not say first I. I implies a capacity of reflection. And sometimes they would say, baby, baby did that, or Paul did that. Huh? He does say I did that. When he can say I, he can reason. He can be responsible for his actions. And now you can be punished <laughs> or rewarded. Huh? Congratulate. Because <laughs> now you say I. Just look at that. One, I, I don't know when I say I the first time. But a, a moment, a, a certain time, I, I say I. When? When I was able to identify myself through my activities. My activity of eating, of playing was not the activity of my brother, my sister, my friend, was my own activity, not the activity of my mother. You know the age when the boy says, no, no, no. I have a nephew, huh? a great nephew. Uh, and uh, my sister said, huh? he, you know, he is the face of no. And during three, four, six months, they say no. What they, are, what they are doing, they are affirming the difference between the father, the mother, and the self. They are becoming their I. They are more and more able to judge, to reason. Huh? To reason. Uh, yes, sister. Here it says that uh, know myself from the other, but in the Ten Commandments says love the other as yourself. Myself. Yes, yes, but it's easy it's not to love, to know. <laughs> 
I, I know myself after having known my mother. Everybody knows his mother before himself. We can recognize my mother, I can recognize my father, I can smile to my grandmother. I don't know I. Because I don't, I am not able to reflect on myself. When I am able to reflect myself, now I am at uh, the age of reflection, huh? the age of responsibility. Okay? Um, I continue. Therefore, there is a need to account for a transition from I am uh, of the intellect to it is of the object. Since in the act of knowing, intellect is formally identified with the others. Don't forget, when I know a kangaroo, the form of the kangaroo is in me. So I identify myself with the kangaroo. I identify myself with my mother. But a time I will be able to separate myself from my mother. Why? When I will be able to judge that my mother is other and I am myself. You know, I can distinguish. To judge is to discern, huh? to make the difference between myself and the reality, even if there is a union between myself and the reality, and the same idea of kangaroo, I am not a kangaroo, and the kangaroo exists. When I am able to say that, I am judging. I am, huh, the, uh, I am exerc exercising uh, my capacity of judging, hmm? reflection. Okay, page 29. Uh, well, okay, here we oppose Descartes and St. Thomas. No? St. Thomas will say, I am. Descartes will say, I think. You know? But I am, uh, I am correct. If I say, I am, uh, I exist. In fact, St. Thomas starts from the existence to affirm his capacity. Huh? Uh, uh, for while, I, okay, while the intellect first having been shaped by the content of the other, in fact, my intellect is formed by the environment. I, how I form my mind? I form my mind through sensation, through experiences. So my knowledge, my mind is furnished, is nourished, is fed by the others. And at a, at a certain time, uh, I know that ex uh, from the other, from the experience of existing with others, I discover that I exist. My, my first discovery is not I exist. It is that I am in contact with others, and being in contact with others through knowledge, through sensation, finally I discover that I am. But for the cat, I am, I exist. I am, no, excuse me, I think. How, you, how do you know that you think? You know that you think only in contact with other through your sense and to your intellective experiences. In fact, the, the theory of Descartes cannot, is not conformed to the reality. We are not a pure thinking machine. Huh? And our machine must be fed with through experiences. So I, I am in contact with the world the world entered my, in me, and little by little I discovered that I am different from the external world. I am myself, and that I can say now, uh, make a, a judgment between I and other. Count, uh, I will not insist on that because you will study with Father uh, Karan. But I will say only a word about two kinds of judgment. A uh, judgment we call uh, existential judgment and essential judgment. I will finish by that because you have to use that in the future. Existential, that means judgment related to the existence of a thing, and essential judgment, judgment affirming what is a thing. Okay, so for example, existence, huh? Existence of the subject, the subject, the subject. For example, I am, or the object, it is. The object it is, uh, is there. That is judgment of existence. And when we speak about uh, judging, uh, it is here. Because our judgment is first in relation with existence, with being. Uh, judgment of existence. Okay? Um, that is the formal identification. Huh? Aquinas will say, I am. 
they can't really say I think in count with this it is, but the it is has no content. We put the content in the thing for count. So existential judgment. For example, God is. Huh? There is a, a lion, there is a, a bear in front of me. Huh? Or there is a snake in my room, <laughs> in my bed. Huh? A sister in Cameroon, uh, <laughs> when she worked, she was, something was on her feet. Warming her feet. The snake was, uh, he, he, he entered his room and he, he slept on her feet. Imagine you wake up in the morning, you have a snake, you a long hour like that on your feet, huh? What you would do? Mama! <laughs> the snake would say, what mother? <laughs> <laughs> so don't move, let the snake go outside, huh? Okay, essential, not the essential, um, uh, essential uh, judgment. We studied that, in fact, when we studied predicable. You remember predicable? It is the manner, huh? the manner, the attribute is given to the subject. Huh? Is it given in an essential way or accidental way? But that is what we call essential judgment. That means when I say man is a rational animal, that is an essential judgment. It's not ex when I say a cyclop is a human being with only one eye, that is an essential judgment. In fact, I, it's a definition. Hmm? I give the definition what is a cyclop. I don't give the affirmation of its existence. That's the difference between essential, essential judgment, I mean judgment, huh? giving the, the, the definition of a thing. And to, to obtain essential judgment, they will use, uh, we use words, we use predicable and predicable categories, huh? substance and accidents. Huh? That is the way we make. Okay, and finally, a composition of judgment. We have a subject, we have a predicate, and we have the verb to be. Huh? And the verb to be in philosophy is the unique verb. Because I have is not a verb. Is an action, is a possession, is not. In fact, there is only one verb. Contrary to literature, my, I remember one teacher never used the verb to be. Use other verb. In philosophy, use only the verb to be, <laughs> because it's a unique verb. To be means to exist. Hmm? All the rest is it in the existence. Hmm? And finally, page 32, signification of judgment in the intellect. Hmm? In fact, <coughs> the, 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 the simple apprehension itself is not sufficient. Hmm? Anyway, when you define the thing, you define it as a cat, you define it as an animal, by when you see an animal, you refer to the existence of something which is animated. You, you carnivore, you, stand, you refer to animal with teeth. Huh? So in any way, every time we, we affirm in the definition, we relate to a judgment. Finally, judgment is everywhere. Where everywhere is concept, there is a judgment. We cannot have an idea without at the same time judging the value of this idea. Okay, so now it's time to evaluate the, the importance of taking a rest. Next class we begin reasoning. Huh? Okay. Uh, don't, don't wait too long to assimilate that huh? because it is a big meal. Huh? Last like that.